What's good everyone, it's Oscar here and welcome back to GeoGuessr Explained. Today we are doing the play along once again. The links for today's games and tomorrow's games are both in the description. So before you watch me play this, make sure you've played both sets. And uh, yeah, I will get straight into the games here and see how you did. And basically the purpose of this channel is just to explain my guesses as much as I can. Uh, so this is my first GeoGuessr game in basically four days because I just arrived back from Melbourne. All the other ones, all the other videos were pre-scheduled. So let's check out what we've got going on here. Uh, so we got some language here this is interesting uh yellow field in sign here will definitely help it help out okay so let's let's run through it so as i said in a previous video these yellow uh, these white and blue strips on poles are quite commonly found in finland and sweden and also estonia estonia is another country where you'll see that but yeah you don't see this too often in that many countries uh, we also have language here gatan will definitely help us out but we'll, we'll ignore that for the second um, we have like short-ish dashes on the outside of the road, but that's really parking zones, so we couldn't really use that too much here. Um, what else can we say about this round? Uh, architecture is definitely interesting. We kind of have these like paneled houses as well. Um, we do not seem to see any red houses. You wouldn't often see red houses in this country. This one is kind of atypical in terms of architecture, I would say, or at least not. You don't have any of those like red houses that you normally see, although we do have another paneled house here, which definitely fits where we are. Um, and so, uh, yellow field in science like this in terms of Europe and obviously this doesn't feel too warm. This feels like a kind of Northern Europe. So that would basically be Sweden, Finland, and Poland. And, uh, basically Gatan is a Germanic uh, word. We can basically tell that. So it shouldn't be Finland unless it was like in this section of Finland on, in the bilingual section. And, uh, it should not be, um, Poland because that is not Polish language. Um, so is there actually anything to say a hundred percent here? We don't have any pedestrian crossings. Honestly, that's probably the best way to distinguish, uh, uh, Sweden from Finland because Finland will have five dashes on the, uh, on the zebra crossing, whereas, uh, Sweden will only have four. Um, and so I'm just trying to make sure that this can't be, um, this can't be somewhere in Finland. And we do have a, a Nordic flag here. Again, as I said in the previous episode, these flagpoles with a thin flag, uh, should be, um, should be somewhere in the Nordics. And then finally we have the Swedish colors here, I think. Well, could that be, uh, definitely has some yellow. So I'm pretty sure that's just Swedish, a really thin Swedish flag, uh, wrapped around the pole there. So yeah, that should, uh, confirm things. Also, I think we saw a bit of a green blur. Like there is a bit of a green tint over here. And I feel like, of, of, although obviously that's uh, an Estonian thing, you do sometimes see that in Sweden. So I'm thinking somewhere Southern Sweden here, not really too sure how far South ends up being on that lake there. So not too far. Uh, and that's a good first guess there. Okay. Next one here. Hopefully this one's a bit more simple. That one is actually requiring a bit of brain power. This one's quite a bit more simple, I would say. Okay. So let's run it through it. So we have a single yellow unbroken line here, white outers. Um, we have script, which will be useful, obviously. Uh, we have square concrete poles with a long lamp here. Uh, the dots on the concrete pole also go all the way down to the bottom. So if, if we were looking at Sri Lankan poles, they look similar that they're square, but they would not go all the way down to the bottom. Um, we do have um, this kind of a uh, pattern on the pole, which is definitely, uh, you know, quite common in this country. We're driving left-hand side of the road, and uh, we actually have cross on the back of the sign, although obviously we're not in Colombia with this script. Uh, I have a bit of a green number plate over here as well. Okay, so we're in Thailand, and, and the best way to tell that is really th this pole. Um, plus Generation 4 camera, because this pole is shared uh, by Thailand and Laos, but Generation 4 is not in Laos, uh, just how vibrant the round is. Um, yeah, so the square pole, dots all the way down to the bottom, this language should be Thailand. Single yellow line is quite common in Thailand. You can see double yellow line as well. I don't think you ever see all whites, but maybe occasionally. Um, black and white and black and orange on the poles like this is very common in Thailand as well. Um, the green number plate is something you do see in Thailand a fair amount of the time, although it's not always obvious. Um, this kind of rod sticking out of the top of the pole is quite Thai as well, I would say. And then this long lamp post is obviously very Thai as well. Uh, we have a lot of palms here, so I shouldn't think that it's too far north, although I guess it could be. Um, I don't think it's like all the way south on the peninsula either. So I'm kind of thinking just like north of Bangkok, but I suppose it can be like kind of halfway down like Chumpion kind of area here, Chumphon, sorry, uh, kind of area here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I'll just go for that. Uh, thin palms. It is interesting. I'm kind of curious to see whether it's where exactly this is, but I'll just go there myself and it ends up being, yeah, okay, near Cambodia there. Not too bad. 
Uh, it's kind of difficult to region guess that part of uh, time, uh, Thailand, I would say. Okay, next one here. We have the French, like, lat pull-down, um, you know, um, uh, pole top here. And so that one should indicate somewhere in France, Spain, maybe Belgium occasionally has that. And then um, somewhere that France influenced, like Madagascar, or in this case, Senegal. So we've got the big Google car. We've got the French pole top. We've got a very orangish soil. And uh, we've got this kind of architecture. Uh, even like some kind of succulent type of plants here, uh, round speed sign, yeah, sectioned pole. It all adds up here. Um, once you've seen it a few times, you'll definitely recognize it. And I'll just go somewhere like around here maybe, and it ends up being yeah, actually all the way north there. So you got three country streak, not going too badly on the score here either. Next one here may pose the first challenge of the episode, but let's see where it is. So we got all white road lines here, interestingly. And uh, we have like a concrete road. Um, it's actually kind of hard to see because where the sun is, but let's take a look here. You can kind of see that the, the road is separated into like square bits of concrete, square sections of concrete here. We have a lot of palms. Um, we have wooden poles here, which is also interesting for the round. We have like a, a motorbike with a sidecar. I would actually say that's quite a useful hint for this round. Um, and that's about it. So also quite hilly. So this one will be somewhere in the Philippines. Philippines is a country that can use either yellow or whites in the center. Oftentimes you have a white line with a yellow solid line next to it, white dotted with a yellow solid next to it. Um, this architecture is definitely fitting for um, Philippines, but the concrete road is probably the big thing here that makes me know it's there. Also, this sidecar uh, motorbike is probably more common in Philippines than any other country. Also, we have a red and white chevron here, and uh, in terms of Asia, Philippines is one of the only ones. I guess uh, Sri Lanka also does that, but yeah, Philippines is one of the only countries in Asia, and, and often they'll have like an orange pole as well, so that fits. Um, what else to say? Lots of palms, so more likely to be southern. I am thinking this is probably Mindanao, uh, the southern island. Basketball court is actually a legitimate meta for Philippines because it's quite influenced by the US and they play quite a bit of basketball there. Uh, and uh, that is about it here. Wooden poles do fit. The, uh, in the kind of transformer in the American style also fitting here as well. Lots of American influence over there. So let's see if we're right. And it ends up being all the way north. What a terrible guess. Um, I don't know, just, uh, just, we're so coastal, that's why we had so many palms, but, I mean, I, I think actually Mindanao and Luzon sometimes do look more southern, uh, more uh, similar to each other than the middle. Uh, so that's actually quite a difficult round there. I, I dare say a lot of people went uh, in the south of me, but, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense to me in hindsight. Okay, next one here. Um, we appear to be in low camera here, so that's really the big thing. You can kind of see the little jut of the extra blur, uh, even outside this massive no car script. Um, we have a crossing sign here with seven dashes. That should only be Switzerland. And then, yeah, massive Alps mountains. So, yeah, this is definitely Switzerland. Uh, we have German here, so it should be somewhere in the German-speaking sector, which is, usually speaking, two-thirds of the country there. And we have big mountains, so I'm thinking maybe somewhere around here would, would probably fit some one of these kind of areas. Um, what else to say here. I mean, there's not too much else to say here. Uh, also, this metal bar around the sign is quite Swiss. Uh, these black and white things are quite Swiss, but honestly, you can just recognize Switzerland from the low camera white white short plates that are on the front, and uh, yeah, we, we should be absolutely fine here. Let's see where we actually are, and uh, we got it right there. Very nice. Okay, so uh, a good region guess to finish this off. Let's actually check out uh, how people did. Obviously, I'm back from Melbourne now, so we can finally uh, play along once again here. So I'm going to pick a random person here, and uh, is that it? No, we should have more people playing, I imagine. Okay. We have this whole uh, list of people to challenge. So I'll click show more a few times here and then we can uh, find someone with a lowish score here. So 17K seems like the type of person I might be able to help, although it's not that lower, much lower than my score. Uh, but let's check out this person who got 17K and uh, see how they were going. So Senegal was no issues for them, very nice. Uh, Switzerland likewise. Uh, Finland, I guess I can understand here. We had a real lack of red houses. Um, but apart from that, um, the main thing there was just the language, Gatan, um, would not be Finland unless you were coastal, and even then you'd probably normally have bilingual signs rather than just Swedish. Uh, the Philippines posed some issues here as well. The big thing on the Philippines run was, of course, that, um, concrete road, 
Um, but of course you can find that in Indonesia, it's just quite rare. And you can also find that more commonly in Thailand. Although if it's a two lane road like that one was, then it's more likely to be Philippines than Thailand. Whereas Thailand often has concrete roads on single lane roads. So that's kind of useful. Uh, and then went for the same guess for me on Thailand. So really not a bad seed, just the one miss there. So we could actually check out someone else here as well. Um, I guess we'll just pick out the next pe person who failed on a different round. Uh, they also went the same for me on the Philippines, but they failed on what? Uh, round number one, I thought they got the low score on. Oh yeah, here we go. They went Iceland on Sweden there. Um, understandable again. Iceland does not have blue strips. I can't remember if we could actually see any blue strips there. Maybe we couldn't, but um, Iceland also does use a uh, yellow field in science. I forgot to mention that. Um, I don't know if they'd use those blue and white things that wrap around the signs. So that could be the clue there. Although um, Iceland is generally speaking quite, not, not so many trees. A uh, bit of a different vibe. So that's just kind of something you'll you have to pick up from practice. But okay, let's move on to the next one here. Skewed world. Uh, no moving, padding, or zooming. I'll see how it happens for us today. And uh, I'll run through what I'm seeing here. So immediately think in North America here because of the wooden pole. So wooden poles most commonly found in North America. You do see them a bit uh, over in Europe as well, more so Northern Europe, but yeah, um, this kind of dry hill reminds me of the West Coast, I would say, maybe Washington State, Oregon, maybe in British Columbia or something like that here. Uh, yeah, and that kind of dry hill definitely checks out as well. But if we yellow on the pole here, I don't recognize so much. Well, like it full screen, see if we see anything else. We don't. Oh uh, yeah, house fills North American as well. So feeling fairly good about that. Uh, but whereabouts, I'm not entirely sure. We'll probably just click in all the way south. I'm gonna go in Oliver, BC here, try it out and it ends up being uh, just right near Kamloops, which is actually a place I've been, so I've been right near there. Um, but uh, okay, there we go, not too bad, got the right country. Uh, so essentially speaking there, um, just looking at the wooden pole and the architecture and kind of dry hills that are kind of rolling or kind of bigger rolling hills, quite often in this kind of valley here in BC, so it definitely works out. Okay, next one here, um, we are looking at something a bit more tough. We have these like huge apartments on like on like cinder blocks. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of thinking this is very remote Russia, um, in in the sense that this is a place where if you had the house on the road, then it would almost be too cold or something like that. Like if you had it on the ground, is is that the right thinking? I I hope so. Um, but I definitely do think Russia just because of the commie block architecture here. So I also see that we got very dark soil here and it's rocky as well. M makes me think this could be Murmansk. Um, if it's not Murmansk, then I wouldn't mind Arkhangelsk, or I could even see Yakutsk. I think it's something quite north, maybe in these ones here, a Salakard or something like that. Um, yeah, I think this would also have coverage here as well. But as for me, I'm thinking Murmansk here is most likely. Um, just going to go for it here, uh, but I think it's going to be Russia, and will we be correct? Okay, it was actually uh, near, uh, near Yakutsk here in this city over there. Uh, definitely makes sense. Someone got the city. Well done, Kowalski. Actually, get in the city there. Crazy guess. Um, and uh, let's move on. Oh, two people get in the city. Crazy. Um, but uh, I don't really see how much, how, how uh, you could do that without a bit of luck. Anyway, next one here is interesting. So first thing to notice here, I'm going to move my webcam over a little bit here. And we have these uh, street signs here. And so these ones are black with the arrows on them and stuff like that. Um, you would expect to see those mostly in Argentina and Uruguay, maybe Chile as well, maybe weirdly in other countries as well, but I would I would say Argentina or Chile definitely makes the most sense here. Um, plates are rather shorter than longer based on this one here, so I'm thinking Argentina. I'm also wooden poles, probably more Argentinian, but yeah, you can definitely see uh, it in both countries. Also painted bottom of the pole here, I feel like that feels quite Argentinian, I, I want to say, I want to say. Um, there's not too much else to say here. Longer grass, so maybe thinking north of Buenos Aires here. Um, big pileup of cars, actually. Look at that. Kind of interesting. Um, what else to say, though? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. Like, this this concrete pole here, kind of thicker and rounder, feels quite Argentinian. Apart from that, it's really vibes here. There's really not too much to, not, too, not too much in the way of clues here. I'll say it's halfway to Cordoba here, so let's try that and ends up being just BA. So actually was south of BA there. Uh, missed out a little bit there by clicking middle. Okay, next one here. Uh, we're looking at the second last round here. We've got a three country streak, which is pretty good for skewed. Uh, this one is definitely more interesting than the last ones. Uh, it feels kind of Mediterranean, right? But we've got this um, guardrail with red um, uh, reflectors inside it. So we know it can't be Spain. Spain would always have yellow reflectors or yellow orange reflectors in theirs. Um, Italy, Portugal, I think everything else is pretty much still on the plate here. 
architecture is kind of flat roofs. So it's almost making me think of um, maybe Bulgaria or Greece here for that reason. Um, this could be Northern Greece for sure. Although I guess it could also be Turkey or something like that. Turkey is not out of the question here. Um, maybe I do honestly not mind Turkey here. It's actually well possible. The thing is, uh, we don't really have too much, uh, too many clues here. Um, if we had more architecture, it would be easier to say. And one thing I could say is that Turkish houses are normally more than one story, but it's even difficult to say if these are actually houses or just like some temporary, uh, you know, uh, buildings that are going to be moved away quickly. Uh, I definitely get the Europe vibe with this guardrail though, and these kind of f f hills and mountains. I, I do want to click Greece, I think, but worried about Turkey, maybe vaguely a bit Bulgaria as well. Um, I guess we'll find out here. Um, if it is Greece, I feel like it should be northern Thessaloniki area or something like that. So I think oh, that's what I'll go for here. Quite worried about Turkey, to be honest, especially because I think like this second bar along the uh, guardrail is quite, quite a Turkish thing to do. I think I might switch. Like, Despite the houses, I think I might switch here. Um, I just think it's more likely. I think it could be like this area of Greece or like this area of Turkey. So I'm gonna try Turkey here. And it was Turkey, very nice. It ends up being Antalya area there. So the good switch. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like a interesting area because it felt like we were quite flat, but then the mountain in the north, we had mountains there. So yeah, not too bad there. Probably could have turned on the compass. Oh, we did have compass on, right? So could have used the compass more, a bit more there. Anyway, last one here is generation four with this really interesting circular blur. Couldn't say I know exactly where this is, although um, we have an African looking gentleman here with walls around all the houses. So I am thinking of somewhere in Africa here. Uh, the full, actually this might be like a full blur, the kind you'd see in Nigeria. Um, and so generation four is actually kind of uncommon in Lagos. You can see it kind of in this kind of area and a few places around the spot, but mostly Lagos is generation three. So. I'm actually thinking this could be like kind of in this like a uh, south of Anugu kind of area where there is a decent amount of Gen 4. It feels kind of southern. I guess it could be Abuja, but the kind of this greenery does feel more like the south half of the country, which is much more green than the dry north. Um, am I even sure that this is Nigeria? I think so. I think this should just be Nigeria. Also, it looks like we may have a green number plate peeking through there. That could just be confirmation bias, but yeah, I'd say so. Um, so yeah, I think I might go, let's actually pick a city here. I don't know about Har Port Harcourt, but I might go in, uh, Uo or Calabar. I'm going to go in Calabar here. I think I've, I've been practicing some Nigeria. I feel like that city could fit for this. So that's about all we have to say here. I mean, like this kind of divided curb as well feels very African. Um, houses around the world, barbed wire, all fits. So let's give it a go here. We might get the right city. And, okay, well, it's just Abuja. Yeah, that was uh, always an option there uh, we miss out. We got five countries in a row, though, so I would say that's a pr always a, def a decent result for a skewed world, where the world record is not even, like, 21. So there we go. Um, hopefully, you guys learned some stuff from my thought process there. Um, let me know if you want to see skewed involved in the game. I'm thinking tomorrow's episode might do Canada, so uh, stay tuned for that, and thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. More daily videos coming, you already know. So, uh, yeah, till the next time, guys, and goodbye.